Hi, camera. Um, so today we're going to talk about all my procrastination. So this topic came about because um, a QI project for Karen, myself, Alyssa, and Dima is really just the goal is to increase your use of OMT with your clinic patients, basically using it in the office as much as possible. We chose five different topics, and in the earlier year, you kind of received a quick survey to go over things in your level of comfort. We took a look at that survey and sort of developed techniques appropriate for you to use. So my topic is constipation. The goal really is to have these five topics, these, I'm sorry, five techniques that are already on this printout. Um, and those are the ones that I would recommend you use because I feel like they're the easiest to use with your patients while you're in the office. So we're just gonna go for, it should be a quick presentation. The goal is to kind of do the practice thing at the end. So like I said, the goal is to do, um, is to practice the techniques. This is a quick picture for the anatomy. You have the ascending and um, transverse and descending colon. In between you have the mesentery. All this is kind of important as we work with the OMM techniques. And then there's also the celiac superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery corresponding to the ganglia, that was another technique we can use. Um, besides constipation, just be mindful that when you're seeing your patient for like abdominal pain and then just knowing some of the red flags that could probably isn't constipation, in which case it's not appropriate to use it. So if they're using snipped metal waves, if you palpate and you see like there's a mass in their abdomen, active nausea and vomiting would be a good time to do it, or some kind of obstruction in the picture, and then they have unexplained like rectal bleeding, not a good time. So um, there are five trick techniques. So what I imagine what will happen is you have your patient lying down for the abdominal exam. So what you can do is start from the head. So you can do the, the sort of the parasympathetics first, so working on the OA. And when you're doing the OA, you kind of want your hands on the occiput shelf, pulling outward a little bit, maybe upwards also. So we'll go over how to do that. Um, the next technique is the sympathetics. So if you remember, there are T10 to L2 to the colon. And in order to treat the sympathetic, she would do rib raising, also kind of corresponding to paraspinal muscles. So as you're kind of going down from head, now you're in the rib raising region, you can kind of work on that. Maybe even do a little bit of soft tissue if you have the patient go lateral or recumbent. And then the next step is you're already in the abdomen at this point. Um, so you've got head, sort of like rib area, kind of like the T10 to like L2, and then you're in the abdomen region. So while you're doing your physical exam, or if you've already done your inspection, auscultation, palpation portion, you can start with the OMM technique while you're doing the palpation. So what you would do is probably the mesentery release first. I think that's the easiest one to start with. And you wanna have the patient supine, which is like where they're gonna start. And you start at the right lower quadrant, and really it's like a myofascial technique, so you're gonna kinda of work in a motion that you feel like it's gonna have the ease of tissue. And then you're basically moving up. So right lower quadrant, um, the next region is right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, and left lower quadrant. So this kind of corresponds also to when you're already doing palpation, right? Like you're already pushing that area, so you can already even go back in and do some of that technique. The last, the next one I feel like a lot of people are familiar with, and the one that probably gets the most amount of relief for constipation and maybe makes your patient go after your office visit, um, is the clonic milking. So that's sort of in the opposite direction of the mesenteric um, release right here because we're starting kind of the right lower quadrant. When you're working with the clonic stimulation, also known as milking, you're working on the left lower quadrant, right? Because you don't want to push sort of this way while there's already a blockage on this side. So you kind of want to push and empty out as much as you can from the sigmoid, kind of working out in the other directions. And this is sort of like a deep pressure and a scooping motion that you're kind of doing. So that's to encourage the stool movement. And then the last one while the patient is still supine is if you remember sort of like Chapman's point, so like the colon, Chapman points are like the IT band, so you can do that as well. So what you want to do is kind of work on the IT band. Basically, you're applying sort of a medial posterior pressure onto the IT band and work in there. So these are the ones that I would recommend you do just because I feel like they're the most easiest to incorporate while the patient's already lying down, and there's really only five techniques. Um, some optional techniques, if you feel like you're up for it that day, <laughs> is have your patient do some sacral rocking. So have them roll over at that point, um, when the patient's taking a deep breath, so inspiratory pressure, you're kind of putting on, pushing down the apex, and then when they're exhaling, you're pushing on the base, as you can see here. And then um, re-doming is another one. I recommend kind of putting your hands on the diaphragm and sort of shifting around until you feel sort of like an ease. Um, so you can do indirect techniques that way. It may be a little hard on some of your like larger patients, but something to try. And then the last one I kind of referenced a little bit earlier is your abdominal ganglion release. And how I would recommend it is that you find the xiphoid process and the belly button, and then you're basically one third is one finger, in the middle is like half, and then 
another third down would be sort of the last ganglion. And you're pushing downwards, um, applying a lot of pressure while they're breathing in and out. So it can be kind of painful, mm -hmm. but another technique to try. Um, interestingly, if you do everything that I mentioned, which would be five points, you basically hit it like five ICD codes. So on the paper that you see with you, I've already organized it in the way that you would perform the technique. So starting with the parasympathetic that we talked about, all the way down to the IT band. So these five techniques basically correspond to these five ICD-10 codes. And if you did all the five of them, then you're basically able to bill for five to six areas, which would be 9927. Obviously, I think we can only bill. Yeah, not to interrupt you, but yeah. if you do a thoracic outlet uh, mm -hmm. release, you can actually bill for three body parts. So you can get the ribs, the upper extremity, and then in theory, you can do lymphatics as well. So if you yeah. always incorporate that into your OMT session, in terms of billing, it allows you to kind of... Go more, more yeah. group. Yeah. I think you can even technically two head if you do OA, sure. which we were talking about. I didn't highlight sacrum because it's an actual technique. Um, like rib raising, if you do that, then rib somatic motion. So at least a few of these bolder ones, I think, are the most quick one to go to. The, the one that corresponds to sort of the visceral and mesenteric things that we're working on is the abdominal visceral somatic dysfunction. That's the one I didn't really know. So 99.09, that one. Um, so with that, it would be five to six areas. Yeah. Uh, even which is, yeah, which, which, is, which, right is here. which is great. If you can get up there, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you're basically, you can almost, this is sort of like maxed out. Yeah. I think it's, most of us would probably do three to four areas. So this is the other building yeah. code. And then with the ideal attending present, we should be able to yeah, go out to the like procedure. If you can do that with the rib raising, you mm -hmm. can get the lumbar region in there. In theory, you should get four. Yeah, and then you get five. That's right. So, um, it's on this paper, it didn't say how many billing regions for codes, but um, I remember I think talking about it, maybe printing out a separate one about how to bill corresponding. Maybe this will get printed out basically.